The Burgundians were a large East Germanic or Vandal tribe, or group of tribes, who lived in the area of modern Poland in the time of the Roman Empire. In the late Roman period, as the empire came under pressure from many such barbarian peoples, a powerful group of Burgundians and other Vandalic tribes moved westwards towards the Roman frontiers along the Rhine Valley, making them neighbours of the Franks, forming their kingdoms to the north, and the Subicalmani who were settling to their south. Also near the Rhine, they established themselves in Worms, but with Roman cooperation their descendants eventually established the kingdom of the Burgundians much further south and within the empire, in the Western Alps region where modern Switzerland, France and Italy meet. This later became a component of the Frankish Empire. The name of this kingdom survives in the regional appellation, Burgundy, which is a region in modern France representing only a part of that kingdom. Another part of Burgundians stayed in the previous homeland in Oda Vistula Basin and formed a contingent in Attila's Hunnic army by 451. Before clear documentary evidence begins, the Burgundians may have originally emigrated from mainland Scandinavia to the Baltic island of Bornholm, and from there to the Vistula Basin, in the middle of modern Poland. Name the name of the Burgundians has since remained connected to the area of modern France that still bears their name. See the later history of Burgundy. Between the 6th and 20th centuries, however, the boundaries and political connections of this area have changed frequently, with none of the changes having had anything to do with the original Burgundians. The name Burgundians used here and generally used by English writers to refer to the Burgundians is a later formation and more precisely refers to the inhabitants of the territory of Burgundy which was named from the people called Burgundians. The descendants of the Burgundians today are found primarily in historical Burgundy and among the West Swiss. History Background The Burgundians had a tradition of Scandinavian origin which finds support in place name evidence and archaeological evidence and many consider their tradition to be correct. The Burgundians are believed to have then emigrated to the Baltic island of Bornholm. However, by about 250 the population of Bornholm had largely disappeared from the island. Most cemeteries ceased to be used, and those that were still used had few burials. In Thorstein's Saga of Vikingsna, the Vesetti settled in an island or home, which was called Borgen's home, i.e., born home. Alfred the Great's translation of Orosius uses the name Burgundar land. The poet and early mythologist Victor Rydberg asserted from an early medieval source, Vita Sigismundi that they themselves retained oral traditions about their Scandinavian origin. Early Roman sources such as Tacitus and Pliny the Elder knew little concerning the Germanic peoples east of the Elbe River, or on the Baltic Sea. Pliny however mentions them among the Vandalic or Eastern Germanic Germani peoples, including also the Goths. Claudius Ptolemy lists them as living between the Suavis and Vistula rivers, north of the Lugi, and south of the coast-dwelling tribes. Around the mid-2nd century AD, there was a significant migration by Germanic tribes of Scandinavian origin towards the southeast, creating turmoil along the entire Roman frontier. These migrations culminated in the Marcomannic Wars which resulted in widespread destruction and the first invasion of Italy in the Roman Empire period. Jordanus reports that during the 3rd century, the Burgundians living in the Vistula Basin were almost annihilated by Fastida, king of the Gepids, whose kingdom was at the mouth of the Vistula. In the late 3rd century, the Burgundians appear on the east bank of the Rhine, confronting Roman Gaul. Zosimus reports them being defeated by the Emperor Probus in 278 in Gaul. At this time they were led by a Vandal king. A few years later, Claudius Maimatinus mentions them along with the Alemanni, a Subic people. These two peoples had moved into the Agridecomates on the eastern side of the Rhine, an area today referred to still as Swabia, at times attacking Roman Gaul together and sometimes fighting each other. 
He also mentions that the Goths had previously defeated the Burgundians. Amanus Marcellinus, on the other hand, claimed that the Burgundians were descended from Romans. The Roman sources do not speak of any specific migration from Poland by the Burgundians, and so there have historically been some doubts about the link between the Eastern and Western Burgundians. In 369-370, the Emperor Valentinian I enlisted the aid of the Burgundians in his war against the Alemanni. Approximately four decades later, the Burgundians appear again, following Stilicho's withdrawal of troops to fight Alaric I the Visigoth in AD 406-408. The northern tribes crossed the Rhine and entered the empire in the Volkerwanderung, or Germanic migrations. Among them were the Alans, Vandals, the Suva, and possibly some Burgundians. A part of Burgundians migrated westwards and settled as Foderati in the Roman province of Germania Secunda along the Middle Rhine. Another part of Burgundians stayed in the previous homeland in Odovistula into Fluvial and formed a contingent in Attila's Hunnic army by 451. Kingdom establishment in 411, the Burgundian king Gundahar set up a puppet emperor, Jovinus, in cooperation with Goar, king of the Alans. With the authority of the Gallic emperor that he controlled, Gundahar settled on the left bank of the Rhine, between the river Lauter and the Nahe, seizing Worms, Spire, and Strasbourg. Apparently as part of a truce, the Emperor Honorius later officially granted them the land, with its capital at the old Celtic Roman settlement of Borbatomagus. Despite their new status as Foderati, Burgundian raids into Roman Upper Gallia Belgica became intolerable and were ruthlessly brought to an end in 436 when the Roman general Aetius called in Hun mercenaries who overwhelmed the Rhineland kingdom in 437. Gundahar was killed in the fighting, reportedly along with the majority of the Burgundian tribe. The destruction of Worms and the Burgundian kingdom by the Huns became the subject of heroic legends that were afterwards incorporated in the Nibelungen Lied, on which Wagner based his ring cycle, where King Gunther and Queen Brunhild hold their court at Worms, and Siegfried comes to woo Kriemhild. In fact, the Etzel of the Nibelungen Lied is based on Attila the Hun. Settlement in Savoy for reasons not cited in the sources, the Burgundians were granted Foderati status a second time, and in 443 were resettled by Aetius in the region of Sarpaudia. Though the precise geography is uncertain, Sarpaudia corresponds to the modern-day Savoy, and the Burgundians probably lived near Lugdunum, known today as Leon. A new king Gundio or Gunderic, presumed to be Gundahar's son, appears to have reigned following his father's death. The historian Pline tells us that Gonderic reigned the areas of Saewon, Dauphiny, Savoir and a part of Provence. He set up Vienne as the capital of the Kingdom of Burgundy. In all, eight Burgundian kings of the House of Gundahar ruled until the kingdom was overrun by the Franks in 534. As allies of Rome in its last decades, the Burgundians fought alongside Aetius and a confederation of Visigoths and others in the battle against Attila at the Battle of Chalons in 451. The alliance between Burgundians and Visigoths seems to have been strong, as Gundioc and his brother Chilpric I accompanied Theodoric II to Spain to fight the Suvis in 455. Aspirations to the Empire also in 455, an ambiguous reference in Pedoc TB Burdundio Duchu implicates an unnamed treacherous Burgundian leader in the murder of the Emperor Petronius. Maximus in the chaos preceding the sack of Rome by the Vandals. The patrician Rissima is also blamed. This event marks the first indication of the link between the Burgundians and Rissima, who was probably Gundioc's brother-in-law and Gundobad's uncle. The Burgundians, apparently confident in their growing power, negotiated in 456 a territorial expansion and power-sharing arrangement with the local Roman senators. 
In 457, Rissima overthrew another emperor, Avatus, raising Majoran to the throne. This new emperor proved unhelpful to Rissima and the Burgundians. The year after his ascension, Majoran stripped the Burgundians of the lands they had acquired two years earlier. After showing further signs of independence, he was murdered by Rissima in 461. Ten years later, in 472, Rissima who was by now the son-in-law of the Western Emperor Anthemius was plotting with Gundabad to kill his father-in-law, Gundabad beheaded the Emperor. Rissima then appointed Olibrius, both died, surprisingly of natural causes, within a few months. Gundabad seems then to have succeeded his uncle as patrician and kingmaker, and raised Glycerius to the throne. In 474, Burgundian influence over the empire seems to have ended. Glycerius was deposed in favor of Julius Nepus, and Gundabad returned to Burgundy, presumably at the death of his father Gundioke. At this time, or shortly afterward, the Burgundian kingdom was divided between Gundabad and his brothers, Godagisel, Chilpric II, and Gundamar I. Consolidation of the kingdom according to Gregory of Tours, the years following Gundobad's return to Burgundy saw a bloody consolidation of power. Gregory states that Gundabad murdered his brother Chilperic, drowning his wife and exiling their daughters. This is contested by E.G. Berry, who points out problems in much of Gregory's chronology for the events. C. 500 When Gundabad and Clovis were at war, Gundabad appears to have been betrayed by his brother Godagisel, who joined the Franks. Together Godagisel's and Clovis' forces crushed the army of Gundabad. Gundabad was temporarily holed up in Avignon, but was able to re-muster his army and sacked Vienne, where Godagisel and many of his followers were put to death. From this point, Gundabad appears to have been the sole king of Burgundy. This would imply that his brother Gundamar was already dead, though there are no specific mentions of the event in the sources. Either Gundabad and Clovis reconciled their differences, or Gundabad was forced into some sort of vassalage by Clovis' earlier victory. As the Burgundian king appears to have assisted the Franks in 507 in their victory over Alaric II the Visigoth. During the upheaval, sometime between 483 to 501, Gundabad began to set forth the Lex Gundobada, issuing roughly the first half, which drew upon the Lex Visigothorum. Following his consolidation of power, between 501 and his death in 516, Gundabad issued the second half of his law, which was more originally Burgundian. For the Burgundians were extending their power over southeastern Gaul, that is, northern Italy, a western Switzerland, and southeastern France. In 493 Clovis, king of the Franks, married the Burgundian princess Clotilde, who converted him to the Catholic faith. At first allied with Clovis Franks against the Visigoths in the early 6th century, the Burgundians were eventually conquered at Autun by the Franks in 532 after a first attempt in the Battle of Vezirons. The Burgundian kingdom was made part of the Merovingian kingdoms, and the Burgundians themselves were by and large absorbed as well. Physical appearance The 5th century Gallo-Roman poet and landowner Sidonius, who at one point lived with the Burgundians, described them as a long-haired people of immense physical size. Why? Do you, an obscure senator by the name of Catullinus bid me compose a song dedicated to Venus? Placed as I am among the long-haired hordes, having to endure Germanic speech, praising often with a wry face the song of the gluttonous Burgundian who spreads rancid butter on his hair. You don't have a reek of garlic and foul onions discharged upon you at early morn from ten breakfasts, and you are not invaded before dawn by a crowd of giants. Language The Burgundian language belonged to the East Germanic language group. It appears to have become extinct during the late 6th century. Little is known of the language. Some proper names of Burgundians are recorded, and some words used in the area in modern times are thought to be derived from the ancient Burgundian language. 
but it is often difficult to distinguish these from Germanic words of other origin. And in any case the modern form of the words is rarely suitable to infer much about the form in the old language, culture, religion. Somewhere in the East the Burgundians had converted to the Aryan form of Christianity from their native Germanic polytheism. Their Arianism proved a source of suspicion and distrust between the Burgundians and the Catholic Western Roman Empire. Divisions were evidently healed or healing circa AD 500. However, as Gundabid, one of the last Burgundian kings, maintained a close personal friendship with Avatus, the Bishop of Yen. Moreover, Gundobad's son and successor, Sigismund, was himself a Catholic and there is evidence that many of the Burgundian people had converted by this time as well, including several female members of the ruling family. Lord the Burgundians left three legal codes, among the earliest from any of the Germanic tribes. The Liber Constitutionum Sive Lex Gundobada, also known as the Lex Burgundianum, or more simply the Lex Gundobada or the Liber was issued in several parts between 483 and 516, principally by Gundabad, but also by his son, Sigismund. It was a record of Burgundian customary law and is typical of the many Germanic law codes from this period. In particular, the Liber borrowed from the Lex Visigothorum and influenced the later Lex Ribuaria. The Liber is one of the primary sources for contemporary Burgundian life, as well as the history of its kings. Like many of the Germanic tribes, the Burgundians' legal traditions allowed the application of separate laws for separate ethnicities. Thus, in addition to the Lex Gundobada, Gundobad also issued a set of laws for Roman subjects of the Burgundian kingdom, the Lex Romana Burgundianum. In addition to the above codes, Gundobad's son Sigismund later published the Prima Constitutia, 